All new at six, what is next now for convicted killer Alec Murdoch now that the state Supreme Court has taken up his jury tampering appeal? Tonight we are taking a closer look at the stakes and what lies ahead. The question of whether Murdoch gets a new murder trial goes straight to the state's highest court, bypassing the court of appeals process. The five justices will decide whether comments made by clerk of court Becky Hill led to his convictions in a lengthy trial last year. Nick Neville covered that trial, our resident Murdoch expert, along with Greg, of course, uh, joining us now with the latest. So, Nick, you had an opportunity to speak with three attorneys today. Walk us through their thoughts about how this is going to proceed. Right, Judy, Greg. So, of course, they have varying opinions about how this is going to move forward here, about what comes next. One point, though, stuck out. They said this case is far from over and the wheels of justice always seeming to move at a faster pace with Murdoch related issues. There's, of course, great public interest here, but also a determination to get it right, they said. Is Alec Murdoch one step closer to a new murder trial, with the state Supreme Court agreeing to hear his jury tampering appeal? We took that question to three prominent Palmetto State lawyers unaffiliated with the case. It could go either way on both issues, the trial, any trial errors, but also on the jury tampering. I think that's a low likelihood of success, but it's not low like buying a lottery ticket low. I would say 75% chance I'm getting a new trial. And I think uh, that's going to give him a significant advantage. In January, former South Carolina Supreme Court Chief Justice Gene Toll determined that though Becky Hill made inappropriate comments to jurors, it did not influence the trial's outcome. The state's highest court now taking another look at that decision. The justice system in South Carolina wants this put to bed. They want it put to bed in a way that delivers justice and fairness and, uh, and shows that we treat everyone equally under, under the law. Toll guiding her decision-making here on precedent in a state case called South Carolina versus Green, which put the burden of proof on the defense. But Murdoch's attorneys argue the burden should instead be placed on the state to prove that the comments Hill made were harmless to the jurors' deliberations, that relying on a federal standard. As a lawyer and as an advocate, I'm in favor of the federal standard. If, if, if there is jury tampering, if there's improper influence brought on jurors, to me it's presumptive that there was prejudice. But again, I, I'm just a lawyer. I just argue the stuff. Uh, the judges decided. Attorney John Mobley says he thinks Toll got it wrong, citing testimony from one juror at that January hearing who said Hill's statements influenced her verdict. She made it seem like he was already guilty. And once the juror says, yes, that comment influenced my decision, that is their evidence of prejudice. So I don't think it even needs to go to that lower standard because they met the higher standard. Regardless of the outcome on the murder case, Murdoch faces multiple convictions in federal and state court related to a slew of financial crimes. He's currently appealing a 40-year federal sentence for a decade-long scheme to steal millions of dollars from his law firm and clients. Live in the studio, Nick Neville, WIS News 10. Hill, meanwhile, has resigned from her position as Colleton County's clerk of court and is the subject now of a state ethics investigation focusing on whether she used her elected position for personal gain.